was in Whole Foods a little while ago, and I preached to you before. I shared my thoughts on my <coughs> checkout experiences in grocery stores. I always have the ability to choose the slowest checkout lane in any grocery store. No matter what happens, there's one person in this lane and there's eight in this one. I get into one, and that one is the one where they say, well, that'll be $11.72. And that's the person who says, oh, I think I have 72 cents. <laughs> Three. So, oh, God. Either that or, oh, I'm having a problem with my points. That'll be $108.74. Oh, where's my checkbook? Oh, do I need a driver's license? And most of the time, don't lose me here, <laughs> most of the time I used to rail because it seemed to be these darn old people. Old people. They're always wanting to chat with the little gal who's bagging my groceries. I sit there and I would try to bore holes of flame with my eyes through their brain. <laughs> to let them know they were holding me up. I had places to be. And so I was in Whole Foods checking out, and I had my ATM card or debit card or whatever, and the little gal bagging my groceries is talking with me, and I'm talking, and I'm like, oh gosh, tap, beep. Almost did it myself. I'm not there yet, <laughs> but I almost did it. And we're talking and talking, and she's, she's looking at me, and she's talking, and there's a little discomfort. And I, I turn and look, and there's people boring, flaming holes. <laughs> and, the, and the person, the, the cashier is saying, sir, sir, you need to enter your pin. I'm like, oh, God. It happens to all of us. What this is about. This isn't about rich people. It's not about rich people are bad or this group of people is bad. It's about nothing stays the same. All is vanity. Everything changes. Nothing lasts forever. Has anybody seen Shawshank Redemption? One of my favorite movies of all time. Packed full of symbolism. Unbelievable. A lot of people think I think Andy Dufresne is the one who is redeemed. It's really red is the one who's redeemed. Red, if you'll recall, gets the job on the outside when he's finally let out of Shawshank. And he laments when he goes to the restroom that he's such an institutional man. He's so resistant to change. He's so inured in a system for 50 years. As he puts it, I can't squeeze a drop without asking permission. I think in this passage of Jesus and in Ecclesiastes, this is what Jesus means when he says, I came to bring you life and bring it abundantly. Because he's come to free us from sleep to wakefulness. Can I get one more? Hey, and this is Andy as he's crawled through a 500 foot, foot sewer pipe on his way to steal all the warden's money. Can I get one more? Nothing lasts forever. Nothing. Your life, your house, your car, your marriage, your children, your businesses, nothing lasts forever. And when we get that through our head, we can start to live with the freedom that Jesus is talking about. Because we realize, I'm no different than you. I'm absolutely no different, no different from you. This is, I thought this was fascinating. That big, big point of light up there at the top is not a star. It's not even a galaxy. It is a cluster of billions of galaxies. Billions of galaxies. Can I get one more? This is some sort of cloud nebula, I guess, of thousands of stars and galaxies. It's amazing and it's beautiful. It's incredible, right? But it too will end. Even this is coming to an end. One day. One day, our galaxy will collide with the Andromeda galaxy, and there's going to be a real mess. And it's not going to matter if you got an A on that test or a B. Can I get one more? 
I think about the message here of the rich man. This is a Rembrandt painting from 1627, The Rich Fool. And I think about what we've started to teach in Christianity. And it's all about divisions and divides. And Jesus says it's not about any of that. In fact, it's about the opposite. If we come to the realization that we're not going to last forever, that nothing lasts forever, that in the end, we all are the same, that we don't put our stock in things that don't last forever. And we put them in the promise of Christ. I think about some of the things that we deal with today, like Christian nationalism. We don't have communion with them because they believe the body and blood of the wafer and the wine become the body and blood of Christ. Well, we, we don't have communion with them because they think that the wafer becomes the body and blood of Jesus Christ. They baptize babies. We don't baptize babies. He's black. She's gay. He's Mormon. She's Jewish. Guess what? She was born in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. And it's going to shock the heck out of you, but she became a Muslim. And Jesus says, none of it matters. I have sheep that are not of this fold that must also become part of my flock. As Paul says, there's neither circumcised or uncircumcised, male or female, Jew or Greek. And let's talk about how incredibly freeing this can be when you realize what this means. When you realize what this means, you can actually drift along a little bit in life without judgment of other people, and it's wonderful. You can actually forgive yourself for not being perfect, and it's wonderful. I preached a sermon two or three weeks, three or four weeks ago, where I used some pretty heady, sophisticated agricultural terms, uh, and, and I talked about what's, what's the rapey thing that you put on the back of the tractor? The harrow? The, har uh, the harrow? Yeah. Does it mean we don't harrow? We, does it mean we don't hook up the reiki thing on the back of the tractor? No, we hook up the reiki thing because you got to grow food. When little Sarah smiles at us and we look and she's snaggle toothed, do we say, "Well, Sarah, gosh, you're gonna have a tough time with the little cough, but you know what? All things in the end <laughs> die and pass away, so you're just gonna have to deal with those teeth." Of course not. You get a, a promotion opportunity at work. As long as work and life balance is okay with it, take the promotion, of course. But these are computer programs that are operating in this world, but our operating system needs to be one that understands that all of this in the end is meaningless. I do some weird things, <laughs> but, but you'll... So I was in Albertsons recently, and I talked about grocery stores because grocery stores are a microcosm of the entire planet. Everything you ever want to see about humanity is in a grocery store. And I'm walking, I'm walking down the aisle because I need some of that powdery stuff or the liquid stuff that you put in your washing machine that gets your clothes clean. And with the operating system of nothing lasts forever. I'm amazed because I'm overwhelmed. It's like, wait, there's Tide Pods, there's Big Pods, there's Small Pods, there's HE, what does HE mean? High energy, high efficiency. There's Purcell, there's Next Generation, there's Gain. I have, I mean, it's like, and I just start laughing at the silliness of it. it because it really is kind of funny. It's funny the things that we focus on. So I know a lot of people, I didn't realize this until I moved to Parma. I mean, I knew this was a squash. But, uh, there's a lot of people in here who are probably some of the most knowledgeable agronomists in the world. You, you, you experiment with seed, you genetically engineer plants, you test out different types of pesticides. I know Darren and I have talked and he tells me stuff about the chemical and genetic things that you did, and it blows my mind. Using thermal imagery from satellites to find hot spot layers on the planet so we know where to water more. Am I getting that right? Okay. 
So I've got a little garden. I mostly grow weeds. <laughs> and I know I'm encroaching on your territory a little bit. I'm supposed to sit up there and here. I just want to bring this through. I was, I had this little garden. And I want to say on Monday, this thing was about one fourth the sun. And I've been on sh Navy ships. We don't have gardens on Navy ships. And in base housing and stuff, we don't sit down roots long enough to garden. For the first time in my life, I had a garden. And by Thursday, it looked like somebody had hooked up a bicycle pump to it. <laughs> and it was on the cutting board next to my stove. And I just want, as you, as you start to think about what's important in life and what Jesus is talking about and waking up, for the moment, I just look, look at the colors. Is this amazing or what? The green of the stem. This will not come as a surprise to you, but do you know this came out of the ground? <laughs> it came out of the ground. And it just blows my mind how amazing our God is. How did God come up with the ideas to make things like this grow? out of the ground, all I did was plug this plant that I bought at Hopkins Family Nursery, and I put a little fertilizer and a little mulch and put some water on it, and this thing just grows. When we start to realize who we are in Christ and, 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 and who, and that nothing lasts forever and how brief that is, that's when we start to have the time to actually look at something like this and appreciate it. I know you guys have no produce at your house. So I start to wrap up. Because we have a baptism. Can I get one more thing? Baptism is a symbol of going from life into death and from sleep into wakefulness. As Emmy Amelia is baptized today. Let's remember our own baptism. And let's all take <coughs> Jesus up on this offer of going from being asleep to being awake. Amen.